so number one topic to get into a little bit of an update on the story that i reported upon yesterday um which concerned um the one drake getting booed at camp flogner um it seems as if tyler Crane has responded drake has responded i mean directly through academics so we're kind of going to go and talk about that and see what's kind of transpired since i made my comment the other day so it seems like my comments that i said previously kind of hold weight i think if you're looking at what tyler Crater says it seems as if the things i mentioned about you know maybe the fact that they they were they didn't announce drake beforehand so the fans were expecting it was a maybe a mistake the fact that drake appeared to come on stage when the fans assumed that frank ocean was going to appear was a mistake the fact that drake stopped in between to gaze the reception of the crowd was a mistake too maybe he kind of invited him he, he invited he gave people the opportunity to boo and to jump on a bandwagon and to you know make themselves um viral in that in that respect and the fact that in general you know tyler Crates fans are quite musically spoiled because they're used to a certain type of thing when they go to a camp vlog now. So to, to see someone like Drake on that stage, especially when it's not announced prior, was probably something that kind of jarred them and didn't really sit well with them at this present state of time. And I think also the fact that Frank Ocean has been a bit active the last few months, right? He's done, he's done, he's obviously rolling out an album or a project of some sort. He's doing that club night with AIDS awareness um, happening in New York at the moment. He's spoken about his love of the bird kind. He's been a bit more press- He's been a bit more present in the press. He's kind of made a couple of statements on his Tumblr. I think people assume that the fact that he gets a bit more active when it comes onto the internet and doesn't disappear maybe was an indication that he probably was going to come. But if you know anything about Frank, you know, you know, if you know anything about his career, you'll know that number one, he's quite incons he's inconsistently inconsistent. Um, he turns up to things that he wants to turn up to. He's essentially the R&B Wiley in that respect, right? Um, when he when he turns up, you're happy. When he doesn't turn up, you shouldn't be that upset because he didn't really, you know, he didn't give you an indication he was going to turn up. And in general, you know, I think this put this this should maybe be an opportunity for most fans to really come down to realize that, you know, Frank is just going to decide to come when he wants to come, right? Whether or not he, that means he doesn't respect his fans or he's a bit up his own ass or a bit pretentious, you know, those are things that are probably things that he'd probably agree with. But I think fans will need to come to realization that now, if Frank wouldn't, if Frank didn't want to come to a Tyler Creator festival, right? Tyler Creator is somebody who has played an influential part in his career. They probably they both played, you know. They both had um, probably as big of an influence on each other as you know, as anything. Probably during the whole um, odd future um, come up, for him to not turn up to a, to a Tyler Crater event probably says a lot about Frank's ability to turn up to events. So if he's not going to turn up to Tyler's thing, for you to expect him, or for me actually, for me to expect him to turn up to Primavera was probably a stupid thing, right? I probably was. Um, a little bit too naive in that regard and i think fans need to come to that realization too frank is just going to appear when he wants to appear and, and when he does and you catch him be be uh, be happy i think as well if you're a frank ocean fan right you could probably get away with just buying any ticket you see of frank performing because more likely than not he's not going to perform anyway so when he does perform and if you're near go and see him play just in case he does turn up but I think to you know to pin all your hopes on Frank Ocean making the festival the festival where it needs to be is ridiculous, especially with the other attendees that were especially the other artists that were on the lineup I mentioned before. It was quite entitled and really spoiled for the you know for the fans to kind of rage out that way. But anyway, that's 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 something I've commented yesterday. So Tyler responded and kind of you know um, said a lot of the things that I've been saying regarding the whole um, episode, but also expounded on some other bits and pieces that we didn't we weren't aware of. So I'm going to quickly just go through that because why not? I've got it up here on the screen. Of course, you can find it at Tyler the Creator's um, Twitter handle. If you want to, if you want to link to, it, I'll actually add it in the links to the show notes so you guys can check out yourself. But here's the, basically the full list of tweets that um, Tyler the Creator expound upon regarding the whole Drake getting booed. The first one is the following that I like to say the following: um, I thought bringing one of the greatest artists of the fucking planet to a music festival was fire. But flip side, a little tone deaf knowing the specific crowd it drew. Some create a narrative it, it, in their head and acted out like assholes when it didn't come true. And I didn't fuck with that. Which is true, right? So this goes back to the idea that I'm not even sure if Frank Ocean was confirmed to appear at Camp Vlognar. I think, as per usual with these sort of events, um, most promoters, if there's chatter and talk about somebody maybe appearing at, at your party, uh, maybe a certain thing is going to happen, certain release a certain art installation some promoters don't mind the chatter continuing and don't care about dispelling or or kind of um, disproving that story or that rumor because it adds to the um it adds to the chatter the overall marketing scheme of the whole event right because if, if somebody's talking about your event whether it's in a positive or a negative it's a good thing if you're a promoter because it means that people have the event in their heads and they're speaking about it right and some people are going to be curious enough to kind of maybe pop down 
So that is a good thing for you. But for the fans, it's always horrible because what ends up happening is that fans end up kind of um, fans end up com- fans end up making up their own narrative, which Tyler Craig has spoken about. But we also end up in these little echo chambers that kind of feed into our own weird um, conspiracy theories about events. Because we're all fans, we're all going to try and confirm things and try and reassure each other that what we're thinking is true so that we don't get disappointed, don't get bummed out. So if we see that Frank liked a picture or he was spotted at this location that was some so and so miles away from the venue, we're going to try and rationalize in our heads why this proves the fact that he's going to come, right? Um, maybe an element of confirmation bias in there, but I'm not thinking that's an actual accurate term. But regardless, we can kind of feed into our frenzy ourselves. And you, what you'd want is for the promoter or the organizer to be like, hey guys, no, this isn't true. This isn't going to happen. Um, this person isn't appearing. Just to alleviate everyone's um, fear, everyone's hopes, or maybe not to, just to probably manage the expectation and just in general not to be a shithead. But I think most promoters don't do that because, you know, they want the chatter, they want the talk. Because again, like I mentioned before, it's hard enough as it is to gain, I think I mentioned before regarding the whole TI stuff and, you know, when he's talking about his daughter with the whole Hyman conversation, which was, you know, um, nasty on, the, on a whole another level. Um, but I kind of understand it in some way, shape or form because as big as TI is, He's probably realized how hard it is to actually penetrate culture, no pun intended, and to actually make a noise or move the needle. It's very difficult nowadays. People think it's easy, but it's not that easy, which is why kids are doing everything and anything under the sun to gain, to become viral. It's not, it's not easy to do, right? Kids are in their bedrooms try and become viral and they don't succeed. Um, and some of them succeed. And then people in offices um, with a marketing team of 20 plus people um, try and make up a scheme and they don't succeed, right? So it's not the easiest thing to do. So sometimes I can I can forgive promoters for being a bit you know um, a little bit loose with the truth and allowing the rumor mill to continue just so it can feed into the event. But then on the flip side, these things have unintended consequences because once you build up a frenzy, you don't dismiss the rumors because Tyler's pretty um, straight up with his fans, right? He tends to kind of like shoot from the hip. For him to like not say anything and just kind of let the rumor persist, and then for it to kind of get to this point, he can kind of look in him. He has to look in the mirror a little bit and blame himself. Do you know what I mean? Like you you played some part in it by not dismissing it outright because. I think I think Taco mentioned it earlier. Um, Jasper from Old Future mentioned it earlier. Oh, Tyler's DJ. He mentioned it earlier that you know Frank is a unicorn. For anyone to expect him to appear is ridiculous, right? He's going to appear when he when he's going to appear. You can't pin him down in that respect. He's you know these festivals that he didn't appear at when he released Blonde, right? A few what a couple of years ago when we missed about Primavera. I'm pretty sure when you do a festival, they give you a security deposit or they give you half up front or whatever. You have to forfeit the money if you don't appear. And he cancelled loads of festivals. Fair enough, he might be, you know, ridiculously rich, but that's a lot of money to kind of like forfeit. So if, if he does that because he doesn't feel artistically inclined to go, he's not in the mood or he doesn't feel the production level is on par, that goes to show that, you know, it's going to be hard to get Frank Ocean out of bed. You know, it's going to be hard to get him out of that amazing loft apartment he's got in New York. It's not easy to get him out of there. So people are a bit, you know, naive to expect it. Anyway, continue with um, Tyler's tweets. He said the following. Um, uh, this nigga, fe- uh, this fin nigga f- uh, did no f- uh, feel... Oh, um, Drake performed Feel No Way. Sorry. That, oh, yeah, that song is really good. Again, that's another thing that really disappointed me too about the whole conversation, <laughs> about the whole booing thing. If you know anything about Tyler the Creator and you know anything about him inviting big guests to his um, festival, <clears throat> you know that <clears throat> one of the best things he does, because he's such a music nerd and because he's such a um, a fan of album cuts, he tends to always get the big artists to come and perform like random songs. Like he got Kanye to perform some random album cuts so we don't get him to, to perform too often. Pharrell did the same thing. Um, he got Kid Cudi to do the same thing. And I think he's sure he's going to do the same thing with Drake. And he did the same thing with, also with J. Cole when he performed. He gets people to perform like deep album cups that a lot of fans would love for them to perform that don't necessarily go down too well in a festival environment. And you can imagine Phil No Waves. It reminds me a lot of like the the kind of like peak era Majid Jordan. It's got that sort of like da, 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 that sort of like um I wouldn't call it Itello disco uh, feel to it, but you know it's kind of a good vibey. Um, it's kind of like a good vibes early in the evening sort of like lounge bar tune. But don't we don't necessarily go off in the O2. So you get why Drake doesn't perform it. But if you're a big fan of Drake, you'd love that album cut to be performed on stage. So the fans deprived everyone else, or some fans, the hardcore fans deprived everyone else of maybe enjoying a Drake set where you don't get to hear the same old stuff, right? You get to hear him play, you get to hear him perform other shit. He even performed fucking um, uh, Wu-Tang Forever, man. And you don't ever hear him play Wu-Tang Forever. Exactly, considering how slow that song is, considering how long it is, like, ugh, 
So annoying, man. But it continues. Um, the song is so beautiful. Also, mostly everyone was having a great time. Those shits in the front area were the ones being rude, um, which I can see why. But now, nah, fuck that. Y'all represented me and flogged to my guests and made us look so entitled and trash, which is very true. It continues. Uh, that shit was like a mob mentality and cancel culture in real life. And I think that shit is fucking trash, which is the main point here, right? I've mentioned before. I think drake kind of played into it by asking permission right by saying hey can i continue do you want me to continue asking questions you never do that never never address the mob never address the crowd if you know anything about cancel culture outrage culture um by and large you know some people were genuinely annoyed i'm not gonna get i'm not gonna you know dismiss their feelings but for the for the my wide majority of them they enjoyed the fact that they were able to get someone of the Drake's caliber off stage, like to boom off stage. Oh, look, he reacted, boom off stage, right? They enjoyed that. So I think you just don't, you don't need to play off. You don't need to play into it. I don't think so in that regard. Um, that would have been awesome. I think that's the same thing I, I kind of ascribe to, you know, the whole debate now in the Premier League with, um, or not in football in general, with racism, especially in Italy. Um, you know, they have some very backward views around like what they deem to be racist and what they deem to be taunting. I've always been of the assumption that if a player does receive racist abuse on the pitch and they feel like, you know, it's getting a bit too much and they don't want to participate in a game anymore. I don't agree with the Balotelli thing of picking the ball up and kicking into the crowd or, you know, pulling the middle finger up like the guy did um, for, I think, the Russian team recently. I would just be more, um, more um, down for just the guy deciding just to walk off the pitch silently. Don't even give them the benefit of joy to like react directly to them. Just kick the ball out of play and walk off the pitch. And if the referee asks you, just point to the crowd and say, they're, they're making monkey noises. And just go, go down the tunnel. And then the game might be called off, whatever, maybe there might be a pause. And all the people booing in the crowd will be dismayed. Like, what the hell is going on? Right? Do you know what I mean? I think that would be a better way to do it. So I think in this respect with Drake, he probably would have been better off just just going through the hits, like, fuck it, just being a professional, just smashing it through, do you know what I mean, just smashing through it, saying, look, there are some people in here that are going to enjoy it, we're going to just do it for them, the ones that don't enjoy it can just leave, isn't it, it is what it is, um, Frank isn't going to come, I'm here now, I'm going to show you a good time, um, and again, like I mentioned, it's such an interesting thing, because Drake is a consummate professional, he consistently turns up, like, whether it's a 500 capacity, um, nightclub whether it's a basement bar whether it's standing on the side of the stage with fucking little keyed randomly right he consistently turns up and has a good time with people right constantly professional um constantly appearing right constantly showing up for the big on a big stage whereas frank has essentially been able to again i love the guy but he's essentially been able to gain a free pass for fuckery because he dropped two classic albums right nostalgia ultra and channel orange you gave us those two projects and now everything he does is you know is, is above reproach Mm, I don't know about that, but maybe that is an, a, a good summation of like, you know, if you're, if you're the, if you're, if you're a star, if you're Cristiano Ronaldo, which he doesn't do, right? But if you're Cristiano Ronaldo and you like to rail cocaine off of strippers tits, right? But you still perform eight out of 10 every weekend when you play for your club team, people are going to turn a blind eye to you, you know, railing coke off t of strippers tits. Really, they're going to do that. They're going to just forgive you and just, you know what? That's Cristiano being Cristiano. But the moment your performance starts to dip, everyone starts to point to those things being an issue. But as long as you're performing on the pitch, no one cares. So I guess in some respect, Frank Ocean should be allowed some sort of, you know, get 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 um get away with anything jail free card because he dropped those classic albums that have essentially that he is he could he could be he wouldn't be arrogant to say that he maybe created a whole subgenre with that whole type of music, right? That whole R and B genre that he kind of spearheaded, which he kind of essentially jumped off the bandwagon completely off of, but he essentially birthed a whole generation of artists. So he probably can get away with not turning up to a couple of events. But come on, man, this is Tyler Crazy event. This is meant to be his friend. He doesn't turn up like come on. Anyway, it continues here. Um, like I love that song and I thought I would never it never happen. Um, he really did that for me and I appreciate it because he did not have to come at all. See our world come together was so great in theory. Um, da -da -da. Uh, but hey man, shit happens. All jokes aside, shit low-key funny though. Of course it was. To see someone like Drake or Drake's level getting booed, it's just like I said, like when when do you think the last time is Drake got a, a bad reception at a crowd? He might have gone to a place where the reception's not been as hype. I'm pretty sure he could tell you that. Oh, uh, was it the Brazil performance I looked at? I think it was some, maybe it's Brazil. It looked like everyone was just in awe of him. Because some places that Drake goes to, people just like are in awe. Like, oh my God, I can't believe he's here. Some places people just go completely nuts and spaz out. Like I think London treat what Drake really well because of obviously his affinity with um, the UK rap scene. 
I think he's gained a lot of um, goodwill here in the UK. He can probably probably do no wrong here. I'm pretty sure some places in Europe too, maybe Paris um, or maybe France in general, maybe Holland as well. I imagine Germany would love Drake as well. So there's some places where, you know, he would probably get a better response, but I, can, I can't think of any place he'd go to where he'd get booed. And plus as well, this isn't like... Um, Drake had a Tiffany Haddish moment, right? Tiffany Haddish did that, you know, the famous stage meltdown where she turned up completely fucked up on the stage and then tried to ramble through a set and people were essentially booing her and telling her she was doing a bad, you know, doing a bad job. Um, Drake doesn't, is necessarily known for that. He's not necessarily known for turning up inebriated on stage and, you know, kind of phoning it in. He generally tries to put on a good show. Even when you've seen him performing clubs, right? Standing, standing on top of the DJ decks, he actually puts on a fucking good show. Um, so it's hard to see him booed for that reason. So, you know, to be, to be booed for a performance or to, because the, the fans thought the quality of music was bad is another thing. But it also goes to show just how musically inclined Tyler Crane's fan base is. And also goes to show why his albums consistently sell so well, right? Um, especially the ones that are, that are a bit, that are well received by the overall critic, you know, general fan base. Um, he, he tends to have a, a very avid music appreciated crowd people that you know like to be on like he probably you would say they were hipsters right kids that really want to be the first person to discover this new alternative guy who's a new mac demarco right those guys those kind of kids who want to discover a really cool experimental jazz band um these kids who like get annoyed if a if a video has like over twenty thousand hits they probably won't even listen to it right or views on it um so they're really inclined to music. So when they saw someone like Drake appearing, they're like, nah, God, no. I see this guy all year. He's all over my feed. I have to put up with him everywhere I go. And now this one safe haven I've got in Camp Vlog, nah, this guy is here again. It's like, ah, when will he leave us alone? Do you know what I mean? I kind of get it. Probably Beyonce would have got the same treatment. She would have turned up there too. I would assume so. Um, but here we go. He says, yeah, um, yeah, year eight, love. I say it's awesome. And eight years of camp that's amazing. Again, thank you, Drake. I'm fucking pissed. Hotline Bling was next. That would be awesome. Yeah, he never performs that, innit? It's fucking crazy. Um, my fucking shit, I'm going to play that in the, in the shower right now. Okay, last tweet. Um, I was in front. <laughs> I was in the front and I hear Tyler, Tyler. I look to my left and this girl, red face, puffy, waterfall of tears, <laughs> looked into my soul and said, trembling with anger, what, what the fuck is this shit, nigga, I turned away so quick, she was pissed, bro, <laughs> it was really awesome, man, but he's a funny guy, but yeah, um, the reception wasn't good, I think, you know, I think they can all agree that maybe it was the wrong way to present Drake in that, in that concert, I think they would have been better off just announcing he was going to perform, fuck it, and if Frank Ocean decided to turn, you know, they would, like I said before, just announce his Tyler Crater and, and Drake, and then put in question mark whatever it was. So if if Uzi and if it just happened to be Uzi and Rocky, cool. But I don't think it needed to kind of you know completely hide all three of those acts. It could have at least mentioned one so that if the other two came out, everyone would be happy. But I think the fact that they just left it blank, the fact they didn't address it in public and say, look, he's not coming, probably just led to loads of rumors and led to people um, getting their hopes up. And then obviously when Drake pops up and it's not Frank Ocean, it's like, come on, man, like this is ridiculous. Um, maybe if you would have even booked the weekend instead of Frank, that might be my other piece. Some fans, but again, I'm probably not, I probably dis I probably don't think so. There's probably a lot of infighting between uh, Frank Ocean fans and Weekend fans as well. So it probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have probably helped the whole matter anyway. Um, Drake responded to it too, um, courtesy of academics. Um, he basically said what I assumed he would have said. Um, he's very humble um, in the whole aspect and kind of understood it for what it is and kind of said without, you know, without saying verbatim because we don't know if Drake actually said this, but Kakimis is reporting it, said Drake has taken it in his stride though. He told me personally regarding the Camp Frog performance, um, it's, ah, oh, mamma mia, what's my phone? I've got to decline this. Don't know who that is, who's that? Decline. Sorry about that, guys. He said the following, um, Drake is taking it in his stride, though. He told me personally regarding the Camp Vlog Now performance, it's a moment of humility, which is always welcomed. He also added, it was just wasn't my night, wasn't who they wanted to see, which is obviously true. You know, we know, we all know this. It wasn't a big deal. I don't think it's a, 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 a slight on Drake's musical integrity or the fact that he's a peel. I just think in that, in that occasion, right, when you want to hear, when you want to hear, um, it's like when I go and DJ in certain places, right? I go and DJ like in a random bar and pub and I'm playing in front of, you know, you know, um, mums and dads and shit. They don't want to hear certain things. When you want to play in front of hipsters, they want to hear a certain kind of thing. You don't really mix the genres too much because by and large, people want to kind of, you know, some people want to get away. Some people want to hear what they hear generally day to day on their Spotify playlist, on their radio, in a club. Some people want to get to a club and hear what you kind of like or kind of bring them, show them some new stuff, right? 
Um, so that probably was part of the situation that happened there. Some those kids just wanted to hear something a bit different, and they'll get given the same old shit again and again and again. But you know, like I said, I think always, um, always fair in love and war. I think everyone's kind of understood it and kind of appreciated for what it is, and we can kind of you know continue on and hopefully now I think going forward too because I think he does it quite well. I think. Ty does a good job of combining, you know, lesser known acts with like a Drake or something. You know, usually it's it's, it's not likely you'll see a Drake on the same lineup as a Gold Link, right? They probably occupy different spaces of popularity, maybe on that respect or of, of awareness for the general public. But I like the fact that Tyler does that. He mixes those two groups of people in the same place, brings different kind of fans together. Because for the most part, most of those kind of fans will like a Drake song or will like a couple of Drake projects, right? They they do. But in that arena, just with that kind of fervent expectation, you just expect something different and it didn't turn out to what it was. And, you know, it is what it is. What can you say? Um, yeah, let's move on from that one. And let's move on to some uh, pictures of the event, actually. Cam Vlog, no, I think they took some pictures. Um, as per usual, they do a good roundup of the of the event, of the people that turn up there. I think, by and large, it might be the most eclectic crowd you see at a kind of festival. I like the fact that, again, it's got a bit more of a black tint. That, again, that's not something I really kind of champion. I'm not one for identity politics, but, you know... There's not many festivals out there apart from maybe Afro Nation or something or maybe even Wireless Festival that kind of welcome that, not even that, maybe Afro Punk is the last one that kind of invites that kind of alternative. Because um, I've always been under the assumption that the general hip hop fan, especially the general hip hop, this general hip hop black fan wouldn't mind going to a couple of festivals if they were actually put on and they were actually good, right? I think the, 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 um, the demand for wireless tickets and the fact that that is always over that's always sold out every fucking single year goes to show that there is a real demand for that kind of music to be presented in a good way in london festival but no one's really done it well enough at the moment i've been interested to see what happens with afro nation whether or not they decide to do one in london or in the uk because i think that would work really well too we've got a lot of afro beats afro pop afro house afro swing artists here in the uk that would really um do well in that kind of a festival uh, platform and I think there's a lot of fans even you know that aren't black who like that kind of music that would love to come and get involved in that sort of thing especially the kind of dudes that throw um, all of those um, uh, those kind of dub reggae you know some Caribbean African influence parties that happen now at the moment at the Jago you kind of combine that with a kind of commercial Afro pop Afro you know the kind of uk rap sort of like element i think that would work out really well especially with this resurgence of uk funky house um that might do really well um or funky house in general you get funky house yeah i think that, that would work out really well but i like the mix the camp vlog now has um of the people that attend i think like i said i think it's the most um culturally diverse festival without waving it like a flag or a banner tyler doesn't necessarily talk about it too often but he has a really awesome fan base in that regard right he blends you know the best of both worlds um and again um this is no um no uh, no different really um some cool installations here you've got a little slide here of the new shooter he has at the moment the giano which is quite cool there's loads of little places that you can take some really cool pictures out which i'm also very impressed with he also does a good job of that the can vlog now a little flower no sorry the golf le fleur uh, flower which looks really cool you've got the Igor statue here um, which is another really cool marketing element that uh, Tyler Crater did with the whole wig and whole sunglasses and the suit. It was a very clever approach to rolling out an album, something, again, that's very going to stand the test of time, something you can take. You know, again, it's, it was a very popular Halloween outfit this year. I think it'll be popular again. Usually Halloween outfits, from my experience, especially when it's iconic images from artists, usually tend to get more popular as the years progress. So I think the next couple of years, you'll see a lot more people uh, wearing this kind of outfit, especially, you know, um, especially fans of his music, um, it'd be a good thing to do. Because um, I think there was a long period of time where everyone started wearing the Tyler Crater um, Halloween outfit. You know, the one with the Hawaiian shirt or the vintage shirt with the cut-off jean shorts written with Biro and the pull-up socks. People started wearing that often enough, so we'll probably see a lot more of the suit. Again, big crowds, people wearing some cool outfits there as well. And just generally a good a good show, it looks like. Um, got the T-shirt the as well some merch there i didn't get merch from last year actually i was quite annoying again see everyone's wearing the fucking suit it looks so cool um again some more people wearing the tailored suit more tailored suit wearers i love that all black with the wig on and the sunglasses that looks fucking incredible um so yeah some cool outfits oh mike g's there big up mike g a long time old school old school um again some cool images man loads of, again like i said a really eclectic crowd loads of really really young fans so again i think it's cool to have somebody like like Tyler be the you know spokesperson for these kind of people. Um, Summer Walker there on stage. Um, 
you know, because he's very much musically inclined. Um, he basically essentially, you know, dic he dictates the taste levels of his fan base and they all tend to be fans of a wide variety of artists. They're all going out and buying albums and buying vinyl tapes and shit. Fucking hell, I didn't know um, Summer Walker was built like that. Jesus Christ, she's bodied up, isn't it? Mamma mia. She looks incredible. She's got like, these lime green cycling shorts on and a strappy top on. She looks fucking banging. Fuck me. I didn't know she was that banging. I didn't know. Okay, cool. Take it back, man. Um, Sam Walker looks incredible. Okay, so, yeah, some cool images here from the backstage. Um, Tyler Crate obviously performing, wearing his suit. He looks incredible. Oh, I love the combination of this this outfit. This suit is like lime green, brown, and some browns in it. That's a very cool color combination. You know what it reminds me of, actually? Do you remember back in the day on Top Man? This is a thing, man. I was so fucking ahead of the curve, man. I fucking gutted myself. I remember I wanted to get this suit from Top Man, but I never got it. It was when they were debuting. I think maybe, I think it might have been during the whole heyday of the whole Heidi Slimane at Saint Laurent. Um, I think they debuted this really amazing skinny tie, skinny suit. Um, it's incredibly slim, slim, uh, slim tie as well. And it was all in fusions. So I had like neon pink, neon yellow, neon orange, a really shiny black. And uh, I regret not buying it, man. I remember at the time, people, someone put me off it. I don't know who. That, that's, I think, it's the last, the first and last time anyone's ever going to put me off buying something. But I remember that suit being such a cool idea to wear just day to day. I think I went to wear it for my New Year's Eve outfit. Let me see if I can find it, actually. It was a top man uh, suit, uh, neon green. Let me see if I can find it. It was from like four or five years ago. It's like a long, long time ago. It was like a skinny suit. It came in like a neon green and neon yellow. I just remember thinking this is fucking banging. But I can't remember. I, I forgot what. <sighs> yeah, they probably don't have it here anymore. But it was something. It was really from a long, long, long time ago. They did a whole collection of suits like that. They did them in like, I think, a neon yellow, an orange, a blue, or like an, a really bright electric blue. It was insanely good. Um, but I can't find it here at the moment. But similar to this sort. So you got this like blue colorway here that I'm going to pop on screen. Similar to kind of this. But a really, really skinny, a really skinny style. But I can't find it. But yeah, but that was that was uh, anyway. Last first and last time someone's ever going to tell me to wear not wear something or influence my decision. But not as baggy as this suit here at the moment, which is by ASOS. It's called a collision suit in green, which is, looks pretty cool. Man, something you might see on the runway or somewhere. These fucking boots at the moment. That Jaden boot is probably the most popular boot this year. Maybe did I see somewhere that the Jaden boot that Doctor Martens with triple sole did that win the Foot, footwear of the year category or something i saw right the award or shoe of the year it had to have won it it's honestly i think it's probably the single handedly the the one sing, single handedly might be the only dr martin's boot that's been that's come out that's got more people to wear dr martin's i don't think any other boot has got has gone that kind of reaction i don't think so um i worked at dr martin's i don't know the type of people that wore dr martin's were a particular group of people you saw it obviously the popularity of dr martin's used to increase a lot more as the season's got a little bit more colder has got more wetter people tend to come to my a lot often to go buy boots you know of course um they're all leather uh waterproof sole um so slip proof sole and all that regard, regard and all that malarkey sometimes you can get ones with waterproof too especially if you put the coating on top of it but they tend to only get more popular as the you know as the months progress but this shoe i think from the, even just a general everyday person i think this might maybe rival the feeler in terms of actual popularity, man. It's so, so popular, this boot. It's insane how popular it's become, but not that surprising, really. But anyway, continue with the, with Cam Vlog now. More images here of Tyler performing, looking fucking awesome. Again, probably one of my favorite festivals to go to. I probably might try and go to it again next year. I went in 2017, had a fucking whale of a time. Ended up going to the Laugh Factory, went to the Comedy Store. Uh, went and saw Venice Beach for a bit too. Such a cool time. 21 Savage performing. Supposedly 21 Savage is having, is having a hard time getting around um, the UK or getting around the world. He's not he's not allowed to leave the US due to his pending um, case of ICE, which is a bit annoying, which is probably why we haven't heard much of him in terms of new music because he doesn't really have, you know, there's no point of dropping new music now if you can't necessarily take advantage of the reception because you know he, you're not you're not very much you need to assume that every album you put out might contain the hit that's going to take you to the top so in order to imagine if he does that he drops a, a, a song that or a track that's bigger than a lot or something along those kind of lines and he's not able to tour it that's going to be really, really disappointing so i um, hope that goes well for him but obviously he's doing his job and just performing doing the best that he can um, and yeah, just a great eclectic group of people attending the actual festival. You got the dude from Places and Faces there as well. Um, yeah, awesome, man. 
really cool people performing at the show. Her obviously doing her thing and performing and doing the damn thing. The baby out there too. I think Tyler Craig is a big fan of the baby, isn't it? His musical videos. I think he's always kind of um, said he likes his music direction. So that might be quite cool to see if they collaborate in the future. Tyler Craig uh, um, directing a video for Ty- Tyler Craig directing a video for their baby would be fucking sick. If that happens, man, that'd be so awesome. But yeah, um, cool performances regardless. I think it was, I think it debuted live on on Twitch, innit, it, right? I'm pretty sure that it was live on Twitch, so uh, you should check that out if you're that way inclined. But yeah, cool pictures nonetheless. Obviously, Drake there, Rocky as well, and Lil Uzi Vert. But yeah, um, cool performance nonetheless at Camp Frog Noir.